السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام يقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا أنتم مسلمون ويقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبت منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين اللهم اجعلنا من العتقاء من النار اللهم اجعلنا من العتقاء من النار اللهم اجعلنا من العتقاء من النار اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وقيامنا ودعاءنا وندعو الله عز وجل ان ينصر في امه سيدنا محمد عليه الصلاه والسلام ويرزقها الثبات وينصرها على من عداها ويجعلنا من المتقين. My dear respected brothers, uh, just yesterday I was saying when is Ramadan? Is it you know the second, the first? We're looking, you know, what part of the world, what is going on. And and subhanallah, today we're saying when is the eighth. It's it's like you blinked your eye and thirty days is almost finished. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the Faizin, the winners of Lagos Qatar. And then he had saved us from the hellfire because if the whole Ramadan passed through and we were not saved, then there is a problem. You know, subhanAllah. And a lot of time we, we rush to do things, but when you are standing behind the Imam and he's reciting Kalamullah, the words of Allah, the Quran, and we don't contemplate, and that Qur'an only hits our ears and it stops at our throat and it does not come to our hearts, then there is a problem. Because as a mu'min, everything should affect my heart. When I listen to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is he trying to tell me? If I'm listening to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, what is Allah trying to tell me? Allah had told you everything, you know, about hellfire, and He told you everything about Jannah. And He told us in the Qur'an what lead us to hellfire, and what will keep us away from hellfire, and lead us to Jannah. This is all in the Qur'an. Then He sent our beloved Prophet, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَسْوَةٌ The best Prophet. 
Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, the most influential person that ever the, walked the earth. And he told us how to behave, how to deal with everything in our lives, from sleeping, from enjoying our families, from doing business, from sitting down, from having fun. Everything is in Islam, from having you know, love between you and your wife and your family and how you express and how you do all these things. But subhanAllah, we Muslim fail to look to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and looking for answers somewhere else. The thing is, we are on the side of the truth. The Quran is Kalamullah Azza wa Jal. The Sunnah of the Prophet came by Sidna Najbri. It is he did not speak haphazard, which now there is a movement to push away that there is no Sunnah we explain Quran by Quran. Once you say that you left Islam, you into Kufr. This is a dundee. You cannot deny the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا We said the example to you in the Prophet. That means he's your teacher, he's teaching you everything. And he does not speak on hell. It is a wahi that has been revealed to him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught everything. That's why he's the best example. That's why he's the most influential. And it was written in a book by not Muslim. So we Muslim are failing to learn our deen and follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and pass it on this to our children. That's where we live in a state of confusion. And sometimes we want to go this way and sometimes we're going to say, if you stand in the middle of an intersection and you don't take the straight path, you're about to get hit by a car or by you know, a truck or by something. But we do that when it comes to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in last ayat of Surah Al-Hashr, لَوْ أَنْزَلْنَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبْرٍ لَأَوَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشِفِ اللَّهُ وَتِيْكَ الْأَمْتَانُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ If we had revealed or sent this Qur'an, which came during the month of Ramadan, to the mountain, خَاشِعًا تُصَدِّعًا, it crumbles from this kalam of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this example Allah says in the Qur'an, we give it to us so we can contemplate, so we can think. If we don't do that, there is an issue if the month of Ramadan, the month of guidance, why? That means it is for you to be among the muttaqin. This Ramadan is a month of training that you condition yourself to change your attitude, to clean your heart, to focus differently toward the future, whatever is left in your life. Ramadan comes and goes. It is our life. It's minus two, minus three, minus four, minus 60, minus 70. And we're getting closer to, to the place we're going to go to for eternity. We focus on this small piece and we forget in this eternity. Like imagine you have this rope that it's keep going and going and going, doesn't stop. And you have this little small piece that is life. The road that has no end, it is eternity. But the whole entire humanity is focused on this little piece. Some of us is 20 years, some of us is 30 years, some of us before they were born, some of them were born, some of us 70, 80, 90, 120. But you put all your energy to this piece, the smallest piece. That's not even point something and you forgot the eternity. So when this month of Ramadan came to us, it came for us as a Muslim to condition ourselves, to change our attitude, to be kinder, gentler, to fix my affairs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to look at my ayyub, to look at what my mistakes, my, my, my shortcomings, my sayyads, what have I done wrong? Not only between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, between you and another human being. It is extremely important to understand that Allah will forgive what's between you and Him. Kaba'ir, small, that's between you and Allah. But when it comes that you had harm another human being, 
and at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even an animal, you still, that, that creation of Allah have the rights on you in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you come in front of Allah, that person say, Oh Allah, you have done wrong to me. I want my rights. Even if that person is a sinner, never prayed, never did anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to come and take from the biggest hasanat you have and give it to him. And it goes on how many people you have harmed. And it is all finished. And then you start taking from this sea at, and you're taking the larger, bigger, heaviest sea at. Because you want to get rid of it, to give it to you. And that is what the mufflers, that's what the bankrupt. Imagine you have done so much sadaqah. Imagine you have run, you know, helping people. Imagine you have done all this, but you have this tongue that did not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a tongue and a heart that is not merciful toward other creation of Allah. You have a heart and a tongue that have no mercy toward creation of Allah. You make fun of people. When you are fasting, you belittle people, you cheat, you do shahada to zor, you lie. What is the ibadah in here? What is this Ramadan did to you? If you go to any training camp preparing for anything and you're in a sport, you condition yourself to be fit so you can engage in that game, whatever you are facing, so you get to win. The month of Ramadan it is for us to condition ourselves, to become stronger, to face the challenges, to face the fitting. And also this has to be given to our children. Because if you pass away, and these children have no knowledge of Islam, there is nobody who's going to make dua for you. Because when the human being dies, everything you stop, except for three. You have a son or daughter that is righteous and make dua for you, give sadaqah on your behalf. When they are praying, they don't forget you. That's when there is, you have to prove your love to your parents that they can't. You know, if you just bury them and you think you did a favor to them, no. If they were alive and you were saying, I love you a few times, a month or even every day, but when they pass away, they need your love more than anything. They need for you to give charity on their behalf, zakat on their behalf, plant a tree on their behalf, sadaqah jariah, whatever you can do. This is, this is for my mom, this is for my brother, this is for my father. This is, that's what the moment, and this is what the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu tried to push us, amal al khair, to do what is good. But when you're doing it, it's good, it has to be with sincerity. You're not doing it to impress people. As we know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are three who will come to the day of judgment with a mountain of hasanat. And Allah will tell them, throw them in hellfire. The first one, no, I was, went to jihad for you. He said, no, 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 no. You're lying. He did it so you can, people say, he went to jihad. He's a strong person. He sacrificed. The second, he said, I became an alim. And I was teaching people, make them to the deen. No, you did not do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You did it so people can say you are Ali. Throw them in hellfire. The third person I have built a message, they have did this and did that. None of it was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to recondition. What did this month of Ramadan did to me? How did I change? How did it affect me? This qiyam that I did, did it affect me? The sadaqat I gave, did it change my attitude? What fingerprint I'm going to leave behind me when I depart that I have learned during the month of Ramadan. The mawaid I listen to, the situation I've been, you know, through during the day or during at night. Did I sit in the corner and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that nobody saw me except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Reflecting that my heart pushed my tears to come out. But I know there is Allah who is merciful, Rahman and Rahim. I know there is Allah who is forgiving. I know there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who wants me to enter Jannah. I know that there is Allah who had concealed my you that did not let anybody see what I have done wrong. Min al-kaba'ir or sagha'ir, any great, you know, or large of magnitude of sayyat or small of sayyat, Allah had concealed it. That means when Allah have done that to me, 
I should consider them my brother or sister in Islam. I should not expose their ayub. I should not say, oh, look at him, what he did, why I sit in a coffee shop, why I got on my phone and social media. These are very dangerous because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ حُرْمَةَ الْمُسْلِمْ أَعْضَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مِنْ حُرْمَةِ الْكَعْبَةِ so the honor of Muslim is greater. You don't think if Allah wants to expose him, he could expose him? So we must reflect, my dear respected brothers. Let's know, what is Ramadan have I done? How did Ramadan affect me? How did Karamullahi affect me? How did the Quran, when they entered my ears and I listened to ayat of al-adab, how did I react to it? There is no guarantee that if you did qiyam and give charity and build masajid and went to hajj, guarantee you will enter Jannah. None of us will enter Jannah except by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? To cut down our arrogance. So I cannot say, I have done this, you have done nothing. A small deed, that is sincere for Allah, will be the key for you to enter Jannah. Loving others for the sake of Allah, loving your brother in Islam for the sake of Allah and making dua for him, that is a key to enter Jannah. Loving for others what you love for yourself, that is a key to enter Jannah, because it cleans your heart. When the Prophet said, What is he trying to tell me? That this heart of mine, I have to clean it. I really have to clean it. I really have to be careful that nothing invades it as you are not, you know, wanted to put any poison in your body because you know it's going to harm you, might kill you. The same thing, anything that's going to affect your heart, going to kill you, going to kill your emotion. When you are full of jealousy and hate, it is you who is the miserable person. It is not the other person because the other person is living his life. You are the person who doesn't sleep. Whenever you see him, you have that hate and you're mad because he's smiling or he's, he's doing some good deeds and he's, that person is just going on your life. It is you who's paying the price. And then what? People around you. Because that misery that you have, you carry into your daily life. You carry into what? To your family. You carry it to your workplace. Then it comes out of you as this horrible, hateful, evil person. So if we had listened to Kalamullah, there was the month of Ramadan, we must change our attitude. Inna Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma bi'anfusihim. And there is two, you know, interpretation for this verse. They say, if you have this beautiful ni'mah and you deny ni'amullahi azza wa the blessing of Allah, Allah will take that ni'mah away from you. And the same thing, if you're doing bad and you don't want to change, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not change anything for you until you change your attitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not need our salat. Allah does not need our siyam. If humanity sends Adam until whoever going to come after us, all worship perfectly, no sins, Allah does not need them. They would not do anything to Allah. They would not harm Allah. And if since Adam to the last person who's going to, to die, have done wrong and mischief on the earth, it's not going to affect the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this month of Ramadan, this last couple of days we have left, and there is the Eid coming, celebration of your fasting, celebration that you hug people you love. But this heart of yours, to celebrate this Eid, you really have to be clean. You have two days to recondition yourself. You have two days to go and say, oh, I have not changed. Let me try to catch up the last two days. And everything is possible. Do not let the shaitan tell you it's impossible. Everything is possible. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he's so merciful. He listens to our dua. And is capable to change things for you in a fraction of a second. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send you hasanat, take advantage of them. When somebody stand and say, help us build a masjid, give the money. When somebody say, there is an orphan needs to be fed, give the money. Allah put you in that opportunity for you to get hasanat so he can wipe off your sayyad.
أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لكم واستغفر الله لكم إن الحمد لله مدون نستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا Allah Azza wa Jal, when he talk about islahu bayn al-nas, and this is where we always have to go back to the words of Allah. قال الله عز وجل في سورة النساء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك ابتغاء مرضات الله فسوف نوتيه أجرا عظيما لا خير في كثير من نجواهم There is no blessing, there is no, no, no good in talking. And here, Al-Sa'li, rahimu Allah, ay la khayra fi kathir min ma yitanaja bihi al-nas wa yitakhatabuna wa idlam yakun fihi khayr fa imma la fa'idati fihi ka fudul al-kalam al-mubah aw ma shara madaratin mathan ka al-kalam al-muhadam bi jami'i anwa. So we sit and talk and chat, sometimes even in the message, people will sit back and talk about things that have nothing to do with the deen. Talk about things that have no, no benefit to you. And sometimes you make fun. Or bring in people on, or see somebody and make fun of that person so we can have a laughter. How is that as a Muslim? If you're doing that to somebody else, would you like it to be done to you? How do you feel somebody done to you? How do you feel somebody done to your parents? How do you feel somebody done to your daughter or your wife? How would you feel? When sometimes we sit and make fun of others and their families and their children and point the finger of their shortcomings. So Allah is telling, illa man amara bi Only people who promote that you make a sadaqa, al-kalimatu tayyiba sadaqa. You help your brother and your sister in Islam to achieve something is a sadaqa. If he cannot get to his car and you want to just help him walk to his car, it's a sadaqah. If your neighbor carrying a bag and you see that he's struggling and you have the strength, can is a sadaqah. These are small little things. But you have to have a good heart to do these things. If you don't have that heart that really look at things differently, you're not going to be able to do these things. Because you're always going to work with attitude and takabbo and ananiya. And you are competing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-kibriya awlillahi azza wa jal. أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس أو معروف كنت خير أمة خرجت الناس تأمرون بالمعروف تنهون عن المنكر. Do we do that? Allah had cursed Bani Israel because they stopped doing that. So we see wrong and we just say nothing against it. Because our heart had died, became passive, we accept the haram. The environment is promoting what is haram and making it acceptable to you. That Allah had destroyed aqwam because of that behavior. And we're saying it's okay. No, it's not okay. You can only exist but set your boundaries that Allah has set for you. Do not transgress against the boundaries that Allah has set for us. Because if you please people in Ghadab Allah, Allah will let you to people who is going to destroy you. But if you stand, and only that Allah Azza wa pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, people doesn't mean anything. But how much do you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is Husnul Dhani Billahi Azza wa Jal? We're worrying about money and worrying about all this thing. These things Allah has given them to us. We didn't make it. You think you made it? Wallahi, you didn't make it. The bread, you do? It's not happened except by Idni Allah Azza wa Jal. If Allah does not want you to breed, you will not breed. A lot of times say, well, the doctor saved that person. The doctor didn't save anybody. He as bad, yes. But Allah who gave that person a chance to survive longer. And we can see many things in accidents, in surgeries, and, 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 and people in a different situation. Because this is hikmah of Baniya. This is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Islah in Bain al When you see wrong, when you promote, in our divorces today, we see women that destroy the husband. That's the father of your children that you put it in jail. And it's between a Muslim family. For what? 
Allah halal al-talaq ashirun nabi ma'aruf tariqun nabi ihsan. A husband hurts the wife, vice versa. And they think that Allah is ignoring them. Allah does not Allah is ignorant to what you do. Allah is just letting you, you know, know that the rap sheet he wants to make it longer for you because when he holds the grab of you, there is no point of return. That's why we have to rethink about this heart of ours. What do you want out of it? Because do you feed it hatred or you feed it good? If you feed it good and hasanat, you're going to have that smiley heart. You're going to have the face that is always smiling, the face that is forgiven. You're going to be humble. You're going to give that to your children because you're not going to share anything bad on the dining room table or when you're driving your car with your children. You talk to them about Allah. You talk to them about being good deeds. You give them about sadaqat. We don't do that. We don't do that. Allah has given us, us in this country, ni'am that people in other parts of the world don't have it. And just look around. Afghanistan, Yemen, Libya. Parts of Africa, in this country, there are children that go to bed, they don't have food. There are children that didn't have jackets and it was extremely cold to go to school in this country, in Fairfax County. But when you're ignorant to what happened in your community, you develop this attitude that you really don't care. A mu'min has to really care, know his environment, where he lives, where he sits, Who's your friend? And mu'minu ala dini khalili. This is the behavior that we need to achieve. We said, our islahun bayna nas. How much do you promote when you see conflict? If, if sisters see a wife trying to harm her husband, she said, taqillah. A marriage has to be built that you marry on taqwa Allahi azza wa jal. You marry on the deen, not on the status. This is what the month of Ramadan, this Quran, is trying to reveal to us. It's trying to tell us those mawaid when we sit and we listen to them. They go on to testify against us when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yemen is so poor, it's been destroyed. And we're enjoying anything we want. You can walk to giants and buy whatever you want. After iftar, you can go to any coffee shop and all the stuff up. You are able to buy clothes to eat for your children. And sometimes we come to Zakat and give in and iftar, we try to negotiate. You know, Zakat, but why is it 13? I only want to give $10. Why do I have to give Zakat 2.5%? It was given, by the way, with the Muslim community in America, Zakat. $1,400,000,000 of Zakat. It's been counted by some universities. So the Muslim community is not poor. We keep saying that we are poor. No, you are not. You're making an excuse to yourself. Because we have so much power, we are educated communities, but we're not investing in each other. We take advantage of each other. We don't support each other businesses to create financial institutions and stability for our communities. So if you do anything, for the sake of Allah, with sincerity. Be careful what you do. Your heart should really behave in a best of behavior. Your heart has to be in a condition that's, you know, good condition, to be forgiven. Wallahi, if you have this heart that is clean, you're going to be peaceful. Yes, sometimes emotionally might hurt, but you drop it. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi went to Taif and he was hit and he was bleeding and Allah sent the angel of the mountain to show him, he said, Allahumma fili qawmi fa innahum la yalam. Forgive my people, they don't understand, they don't know, they have no knowledge. Give your brother and your sister excuses. Give them excuses. Don't wait for the mistakes so you can punish him. Give him excuses. Reach out to him. Talk to him. Do that between a husband and a wife. Do that with your children. Express love. Express love to your brother in Islam, to your wife, to your children, and vice versa. Hug them. Because if you don't get it from you, you're going to get it the haram way. Say to your daughter, you are beautiful. 
Allah made you so beautiful. So she know her father that loves her, would do anything for her, told her she's beautiful. You build the confidence in her. Say to your son, you're handsome, you're smart, tell him you're smart. My brothers, our deen is so beautiful. Alhamdulillah ala ni'matul Islam. We should be so grateful to Allah that we are here, that we are among Ummah Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we make our salat, we make our siyan. But we need to push ourselves further. We need to clean our heart. So we can meet Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi wa sallam. And we want to meet among the people that Allah is going to reveal himself to them. يوم القيامة وحبكم في الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم أدينا في من هديت وباكنا في ما أعطيت وقينا شر من هديت اللهم أدينا وهدي بنا اللهم أدينا وهدي بنا اللهم أهدي أهد هذا البلد الإسلام وحبك إليهم الإسلام والمسلمين وجعلنا بكون قدوة لهم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وارحم أمواتنا واشفي مرضانا اللهم تقبل صيامنا وقيامنا وصلاتنا ودعاءنا وصدقاتنا اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء من النار اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء من النار اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء من النار اللهم يا رب ارحم الراحمين اللهم ارزقنا بحلالك عن حرامك وفضل خير عن سواك اللهم ارزقنا البركة بكل شيء اللهم احفظ بناتنا اللهم احفظ بناتنا واولادنا وزوجاتنا وأمة سيدنا محمد اللهم اراد بنا سوءا اللهم اجعل دائرة السوء علينا اللهم اراد بنا خيرا اللهم وفقه لما يحبه ويبارك we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put a blessing on all our Muslim community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the people of this country to Islam and open their heart and make us an example to them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us during the month of Ramadan among the people that have been saved from the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our siyam, our fasting, our zakat, our sadaqat, Anything that we did for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to forgive our sins in this month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy in our parents and loved ones that depart and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our hearts and to clean them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put al barakah in everything we have. Al barakah jundun bijundillah. Rabbana atina di dunya hasana kufil ayahti hafina adam Allah. Salla wa sallam wa ala sallam Muhammad wa akhim salat. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله